Hello and welcome to Whisky Podcast number three, I believe. Um, yep. We shall. Three or five. Three or five. What? Well, we've recorded. This will be the fifth one we've recorded. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. So it's not that there'll only be five. He's not predicting his <laughs> no, death. No, no. Um, no. It, yes. Yes. So, as we mentioned last time, um, this should have been coming not live from Spaceside, but it should have been recorded in Spaceside. Uh, we did spend an hour recording a podcast in Speyside, but due to technical difficulties, uh, we lost the recording, which makes yeah. the second time we've managed that. Yeah. So for two engineers, yeah. um, it's well, not a great record. A mechanical engineer, computers just break things. Uh, I mean, technically, I don't do software, but yeah, <laughs> I still feel like between us, we should have probably have a better than a sixty percent strike rate on recording yeah. well, audio. We're assuming that we're going to manage to get this one to work. That's a fair point. <laughs> So, right. yes, um, so w- what we'll do is we'll, as usual, we're going through a Dram Team box, this one from February, um, and we'll also discuss all the distilleries uh, and a couple of other places that we visited while we're up in Speyside as well. Yep, that sounds like the best course of action. Yeah. Okay, so this month the uh, theme is Campbelltown Classics, so it's Lowland, I believe that's correct. Um, yeah. Campbelltown is Lowland, isn't it? Yeah. Because ah, it's near Glasgow. Well, it's it's not. It's sort of as the crow flies, but you have to go away, away around because it's on the part of a... Uh, it's on a little bit that sticks down towards Greenock. Oh, so you have to go north and then come back down south? Yeah. Right, or okay. take a ferry from Greenock. All right. Okay. So we'll start... Well, seeing as we've got six places to discuss, why don't we start with... Um, the first distillery, and then we'll get into the first whiskey. Okay. So the first distillery that we visited uh, was the Ben Ramac. It was. Which is over in Forres. I'm sure I'm going to get one of these names wrong at some point, but it's over in Forres. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were staying in Elgin, uh, which is kind of like the capital of, of Speyside, if you listen to some people. I suppose um, that's the way to say it. It's probably the biggest town there, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the heart of the space side industry. And it's there's right in lot, the middle, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of distilleries around it. Um, it's got Walker shortbread, so, you know. Yeah, got everything you need. Yeah. A healthy, balanced diet. Um, yeah, so Ben Mac is is just by the train station, which was ideal for us as we were taking public transport around so that we could both drink. Um, short walk away, it's it's owned by Gordon and McPhail, um, which yes. is an Elgin grocer, or originally a grocer, but now... A massive concern in the whiskey world. They bottle their own. Um, they've got a, a huge whiskey uh, collection, but we'll talk about them some more later. Uh, so we went there about ten thirty in the morning. Yeah, got there a little bit early, but yeah, uh, very lovely, very welcoming, uh, which is a theme really for all of yes, these. All of the uh, so we went in. We had booked tasting, so we got to try. Three, select, uh, four, I think, of the uh, four of the ones on the wall. Yes. Um, so they had, uh, as, as is with usual with these, they had the visitor centre, and they had all the ones you could taste on the wall. They talked you through all of the ones and what the differences were, and then they let you pick. Yeah, four. They let you pick four. So we picked two each. Yep. Um, so we went through. I'm just referring to our sheet here. We went through the Benramac Organic, uh, the Benramac Wood Finish, Chateau Seasac, yes. uh, the Benramac 15, and the Benramac Cast Strength. Yes. Um, and we rated them all very highly. Yeah, there was no no duds. No. Another so, theme. Yeah, Benramac has a theme of light smoke, which uh, anyone who listens to this and reads his blogs know I'm always wary of smoke, but it was not enough to kind of overpower the other flavours. It Often. added barely noticeable yeah it kind of added to it uh, and we know they were pretty good because you bought your first ever bottle from a distillery yeah well not my first ever bottle but no when i was at the distillery i was moved to buy one yeah i was i was close to to buying one and getting it posted back so yeah luckily yes. for me i was the one who drove us there and i own i was able to drive back so i was able to buy it your chateau seasac yes um, just looking at the scars we gave them, none of them scored below a four. So, yeah, so Ben Mac in Forres, uh, great distillery, very welcoming, great whiskey. So, 
pretty much what more could you ask for? Yep. Okay, yeah. do you want to introduce us to his first whiskey of the day? Sure, I can do I can do that. Uh we've got uh the Hazelburn age ten years here. Um now uh interestingly, although it's called the Hazelburn it's the is the Hazelburn age ten years, it's also it's distilled by Springbank who have two actual spring banks in here and another one distilled by them uh says on the card um first distilled in 1997 hazel burn is spring banks triple distilled and unpeated spirit producing a whiskey that is light fruity and subtle in character it accounts for 10 percent of the distillery's total output of whiskey so it's a big deal so it's a different brand but it's the same distillery yeah right um okay. so Triple distillation means the spirit is the produce of one wash still, but then two different spirit stills rather than one, which is what you would normally get. So I'm just going to open this up. Uh, we can get to discussing the nose. It's fairly sweet on the nose. I'll pour it into my glass before I make it. A little bit of vanilla bit, bit of wood there as well, like a light oakiness, I'd say. Yeah. So the the notes written in the card say the nose is of stewed pears and baked apples and followed by honeycomb and fudge notes. So the fudge will be vanilla. Yeah, so nothing like I said. (laughs) But I can get the pear actually quite quite a lot coming through. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Not getting a lot though. But all right, let's take a drink. That's quite spicy. Fairly like a medium finish. Yes. It's quite warming. It is. It, it does have a little bit of a spice on the tongue. Mm. Um. So we've got. Uh, oh, it's quite. It's like got that oily creaminess at the end as well. It's, yeah, it's quite caramelly to begin with, like a kind of burnt caramel. Not burnt, but you know, cooked. Yeah. Well, they went with. Uh, Lovely and rich with vanilla and honey flavours. Licorice mm-hmm. follows with a refreshing zestiness. So I can imagine that a refresh that uh, zesty licorice is probably the spiciness that we're getting yeah. in an yeah. aniseed type deal. As we learn more words. Yes. Uh, uh, we, we also dif- differentiate found between from, spicy and zesty. Yeah, we found out from some from our travels that. Uh, a lot of it just depends on your frame of reference. So someone might yeah. say apples, someone might say pears, someone might say grapefruit. You know, just yeah, all depends on your upbringing. Shout out to Sarah. Yep, yeah, and uh, Dow. She was also saying about ah uh, yes, it was yes, both Sarah and Dow. Bananas and stuff. Yeah, yeah, because of her upbringing being different to to ours. Yes. Okay, do we want to move on to the next distillery? I guess. Yeah, do you want to go do us, give us a little chat about Glen Murray? Yeah, uh, we forgot to mention that after we had our tasting, we did manage to. Uh, we asked for uh, uh, Ben and Mac. We did ask for to try another one other whiskey. Yes. Um, and they they were accommodating. We offered to pay, but they uh, they just brought us it out free of charge. Yes. Just, I guess it probably helps that I just bought a bottle of whiskey and you just bought a glass. Like we weren't just trying to freeload. But, um, like I say, I think we're still in that sweet spot where we we obviously know enough about whiskey to show that we're interested and we care about it and respect it. Yeah. But we're not at that point where we can't learn anything, so they still get that little bit of, oh, these guys need a bit of a hand, a bit of pity. Yeah. And then, you know, when it's all, all, seemingly always women, they just the nurturing instinct seems to come out and uh, yeah. they, they offer us more whiskey. Yeah, um, maybe. Maybe that's it. My baby face. Yeah. And my beardy face. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we um we went from uh from Forres at the Ben Mac. We went back to our hotel, but uh, nearby in in Elgin is the Glen Murray Distillery. So a um, mile away, something like that. Something like that. We wa- we walked along there after I dropped off my bottle um to get lunch, and we had another tasting uh, booked there. Um, so it was another tasting for four whiskies. Um, it was from it was the exclusives range, which was whiskies that were only available in 
in the distillery. So um, you might need to help me out with the four that we got. Uh, we had two that were Pedro Jimenez sherried whiskies. Yes, yeah, so, so we had um, the Glenmarie Cider Cask Project. Oh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was with, from... Uh, they had uh, given a... They basically had a sort of exchange program going on where uh, they'd given a whiskey ca- uh, cask to... Or not one. They'd given some whiskey casks to the cider company. I can't quite remember the name right now. But uh, it might come back to me. And, no, I can't uh, remember at the moment either. And they, but they, um, basically they gave them the whiskey casks for them to brew, I guess, their cider in. Um, yeah. And then, so they had a, a, a whiskey cask cider, and then they returned the casks after they'd been used for cider, and the whiskey was made in them. So they had the cider cask whiskey. That was, which was quite nice. Yes, Fru- fruity. Obviously, I was worried it was going to be weird because I'm not a big cider fan, but it was it was great. Yeah, it was good. Um, the second one we had was the Glenmarie PX finish, so Pedro Jimenez. Yeah, uh, sherry sherry cask yeah. finish. So as I'm sure people can guess, we enjoyed that one. Yeah, um, very good. Then we had the Glenmarie 120th anniversary. Oh yeah, which was actually was... released on the 121st anniversary, but still yeah, they were they were a bit late. So yeah. all of these were. But these are ones that were exclusive to the distillery. Yes. Yeah. So I believe that they were either they either they, their run had finished or their run had not started. I think was the, what I got from. Yeah, the Cidercast project hadn't started yet. I think. Yeah, and the 120th anniversary had already been. Yeah, and so. then the last of the tasting was the Glenmarie Petered uh, Pedro Jimenez finish. Yeah, which was again as although it was peated, it was. Well it balanced. Nice. It wasn't yeah. overpowering at all. It was only lightly peated. I think like twenty parts per million yeah, or something. Twenty twenty five. Not a lot. Yeah. Um, and then again, we managed to uh, wrangle a free one. Yeah. We saw uh, fellow tasting guests had paid for Battle Rome, and there were three choices. Yes. So we asked if we could try the uh, peated Cabernet Sauvignon finish because we like his wine cask finishes. Yeah, that dry. Yeah. Tannin, Tannin. Um and again we offered to pay and again we were allowed to, to take a dram for free. Yep. So we offered to offered to pay twice. It was weird being in Scotland and meeting generous people. I think it's uh, uh with whiskey it's different. People wanted to share the passion, isn't it? Yeah, people wanted to share their whiskey. Before we move on, just yeah. to go back to the Hazelburn ten, we didn't score it. Oh we did not. So I've put the notes down. Uh, what would you give it? I've given it a free. Yeah, I was gonna say probably a three. Okay. It was uh, it was just a, a, a it was a, a good whiskey, but nothing. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't complain, but it, yeah, yeah, nothing to blow your mind. I'd definitely be happy. I could I could even get a bottle of it if it was reasonably priced. Yeah, because it's easy to drink, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Yeah. We we have to we did explain in our lost space side podcast the scoring system yeah that three and a half is actually a towards a very good yeah um and uh yeah so so maybe we need to flesh out the scoring system a bit more yeah and just start while, in... we're, while we're doing side notes and tangents i'll try to um line up the photos with with what the distillers we're discussing yes so we took quite a lot of photos so hopefully then pe- people can see um, yeah just how, how lovely basically the area is and the distilleries are and the visitor centres and everything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. On to so, the Glen okay. Scotia double cask. I think yes. you're up. Yep. So as you said, it's Glen Scotia double cask. Uh, the notes this Glen Scotia is matured in fine oak barrels, then finished in a combination of first fill bourbon barrels and Pedro Jimenez sherry casks, hence double cask. This is a dram team favourite. And a fantastic, crowd-pleasing, bang-for-your-buck shelf staple. So I'm looking forward to this one. Yep, should be. On the nose, it's creme caramel, caramelized fruit sugars, toffee and fudge before apple and peach. Note of bourbon with a pleasing, dusty dryness. That's a lot on the nose. Yeah. Like, I'm not sure I'm that skilled. I'll sniff the inside of my elbows was taut. Yeah, well, we, we've heard about uh, people saying they can get 150 things on the, on yeah. the nose alone, so... That is very caramelly. I'm just pouring mine in. 
very caramel. That's lovely to smell. Probably. I get, I get the creme caramel. I don't really get fruit. I see what they mean by caramelized fruit sugars, but I feel like it just smells like caramel again and toffee and fudge again. Mm. It's just, very, very, very much got that creme caramel. Yeah, dominates. There is a little bit of fruit right at the end. I don't know if I get the pleasing dryness. I can never tell what's dryness and what's just alcohol drying my nose out. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Because I okay. was definitely going to say my nose feels dry. Yeah. But that's just out. Anyway. So, um, the palate, sweet start and quite fat with good mid-palate weight, dry distillery character, with w- but with countering depth. And the finish is deep and dark. Okay. Okay, that's lovely. That is mm. very nice. Yeah, the it finish goes on for very... ages. I, I get what they say with the deep and dark. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's that continues to build. That's very nice. It's interesting that their palate notes don't really say anything about flavours because my I'm struggling. It's kind of got a chocolatiness to it. There's a chocolatey caramelliness to it. Yeah. That caramel definitely comes through. I get the whole, what they say about the wide mouthfeel and all that. You can definitely tell the sherry influences. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what how That's much... very nice. This is a, me showing my ignorance a bit, but I wonder how how different uh, it is to go from, like, the two main sherries that they use, the Pedro Jimenez or the... Um, Oloroso. Yeah, the Oloroso. I wonder how much of a difference it makes... If Which you read one? your Gordon McPhail wood book, it explains there's three sherry casks and what each one gives you. Oh, that's good. I yeah. haven't read it yet, but I plan to read it. So I can't remember too much, but I remember that they say that Oloroso gives you the deeper, wider flavours, mm. and Pedro Jimenez is more dry. All right. So maybe I'll be a fan of Pedro Jimenez whiskeys more, mm. because I like the dryness. That's very nice. I like that a lot. It was pretty good. Okay, Glen Scotia double cask. So I'm saying strong caramel on nose and flavour. Uh, chocolatey. Very long, deep finish. Um, wide mouth feel. Overall, excellent. About a four and a half, personally. I'll probably go like a four. Yeah. It was good, but... I really enjoyed that, I must admit. It's definitely going on my wish list. Your wish list's uh, getting quite expensive, I think. Yeah, it's always been quite expensive. It's not a wish list, why is it? Yeah, but it's getting extensive as well, so... (laughs) It is. It does grow faster than I can buy, then. You should probably concentrate on getting that uh, whiskey cabinet first. Yeah, probably having somewhere to actually put the whiskeys would be good. Yeah. They are now down yeah. into my half. Yeah. Soon enough, you'll just be filling up your flatmate's room with them. Like, oh, I've got to store them somewhere. Well, let's get rid of these bikes. You don't need them. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so I'll talk about the next place, I guess, in a little yeah. bit. A highlight of the trip, I would say. I would say so as well. I would agree. Um, so after the Glamour uh we walked, wandered, meandered. Yeah. Meandered. Yeah. Luckily, we we were a bit tight for time, but uh, we because you, when we got there, we got there early again because we were going to get lunch before, and they said we could just do our tasting yeah. then. So we didn't, we weren't as tight for time, so we had a bit of time to stroll back into Elgin. Yes, and bearing in mind that every uh, tasting we had was a, a single, maybe a twenty-five mil single, but still a single. Yes, we were. They weren't they weren't tastings; they were pretty generous. We yeah. were about ten in by this point. Yes. In like three hours. Yes. So we were fairly merry. Yeah. Um, well oiled. Is a... Yes. Yes. Um, so we went to Gordon McPhail, which, as I've said, is a, a grocery. Uh, I don't say grocery. It's a gro- as in an old fashioned grocer's shop, you know, a, a Victorian grocer's shop um, yeah. that the two brothers who uh, built it, made it, um, specialised in whiskey. So they used to and they still do. Um, choose certain casts from certain distilleries and then they age them themselves in their warehouse. Um, they've just released, in fact, a Glenlivet 70 years old. That is impressive. Yeah, 
Um, uh, so the, the they, restraint to not drink it is the yeah. So they are experts on pairing new make spirit with the right kind of uh, cask in the right kind of wood um, for the right amount of time. Yeah. And if you look at the the pamphlet they gave us, it shows how as the whiskey gets older, they have to sample it more and more because basically it's a line between distillery influence and cask influence. And you don't want one to overwhelm the other. Mm. So, yeah, so th- this is how they make the money. As we saw when we were in there, they had whiskies in there for like 20 grand. Yeah. Um, we saw someone buy one for, what, 1800 what, was it? 1500, 1800, yeah, something like that. So, th- I mean, they're experts at it. This is, you know, they've been doing it for nigh on 100 years, maybe longer. Mm. Um, yeah. So well, they, they at stuff. least 70. By yes, the of things. obviously. Um, yeah. So, yeah, they know the stuff. They're, they're very well respected. I'm going to go ahead and say that the uh, the uh, ba- the character from the cask probably dominated in that 70 year old. Uh, yeah, well, it depends on the on the uh, the spirit, doesn't it? The new make it might have just been. It would have had to have been some pretty characterful new make. Well, presumably it was for him to decide to keep it in for 70 years. I suppose. Anyway, um, so we booked the connoisseur's choice tasting there. Yeah. Yes. Which, is Which from was the Connoisseur's yeah, Choice it was, range. It was his most expensive tasting, but it wasn't egregious. No. And basically, what that meant was we were taken up to the boardroom, which, as with all tastings, was a very lovely room. Yes. Um, and we were guided. F- so um, you arranged loose, it. Loose, loose screws. Yes. Globes everywhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. You were, you arranged it, and uh, basically, you specified what kind of whiskies you were into. So. You yeah. just basically said that we weren't into heavy peat ones. Yeah, I said no, like, characteristically Isla whiskies. Yes. So um, we were taken up to the board room. We were given a presentation on the history of Gordon MacPhail, what they do, uh, which is why we know a little bit about them with the casks and the 70-year-old and stuff like that. We were yeah. given uh, a couple of books, one on how you match the wood to the new make, a couple on their latest kind of ranges. Yeah. And we were given, uh, they chose five? Six, I think. Six, yeah, you're right, six uh, whiskies. They selected them. But rather than a normal tasting, um, they, the, the, uh, a lady always sounds disrespectful. Woman? What sounds? A person. All oh, right, okay, yeah. So, <laughs> so Sarah, the, yeah. the whiskey kind of guide, yeah. um, she, uh, encouraged us to kind of taste it for ourselves and speak what flavors we were getting. Yeah. And then she would kind of try and steer us and confirm yeah. and say, you know, what, what kind of influences you're getting on this. And it was good. It was, it was really kind of, it sort of helped us, helped us yeah. learn a little bit. Cause she obviously then, knew what she was talking about, like yeah. way beyond what we do. Um, well, yeah, she worked in the wine industry doing the same sort of thing for, yeah. So she knows, she knows her, her booze. So if she starts a podcast, you should probably listen to that instead of this. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, don't listen to She's got to a better accent as well. Yeah, I don't know about... Uh, possibly. I, do. uh, I mean, I like the Archer accent, but mine's not a great example. Um, but yeah. I'm no, I'm no Sean Bean. No. This is always... This is true of every man. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. So, yes. So she took us through five different tastings. Um, you know... Six. Six, sorry, six different tastings. Yeah. Taught us a lot, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, it was very good. I had a very good time. Yeah. Um, we had quite a lot, quite a lot of laughs. Hopefully, we weren't too annoying. Yeah, I think um, we. They did say that they recommended an hour and a half. So the fact that uh, we were having fun and making conversation, I think, was expected. We were in there about an hour and a half, weren't we? Yeah. And um, also going to say uh, the. Uh, yeah, and I I managed to guess the uh, Highland Park was from Highland oh, Park. You, yes, you did. I had to bring it up. It was it was it's, it's my best moment. It was very impressive. She definitely fell uh, deeper in love with you at that point. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yes, and then we did accidentally stalk her later. Yeah. But um, yeah. Yeah. When we were we were recommended um, where to go for our tea that by, night, by our di- dinner to you, Southerners, by the people, by the people at Bed Mac. Mac. Not Ben Romack. Yeah, not by, not by Big Ben. <laughs> um, 
yeah and it turned out that uh so were there as well um and then she she um recommended a very nice whiskey there as well a uh, very expensive but very nice whiskey there yes um so yeah it, and it wasn't a very nice uh, it was a very nice pub that sounded like i said wasn't it was a very nice pub it was um so if yeah, you find yourself up in, yeah if you find yourself up in elgin and you're looking for somewhere to eat um uh, droofy cobbler is a good one yeah lots of whiskeys good food nice ma- nice atmosphere say hello to sarah yeah she's um, the french one yeah tell her david says hi uh, the guy no, who guessed not the josh though no no oh. i don't say hello to people um I don't okay. know where I was going with that. I don't know. We've went to the end of the uh, yeah <laughs> of, of that meander. Yes. Uh, so that was that was the end of the first day, basically. Yeah. Um, it was a good day. It, it was, was a very good day. We had drank a lot of whiskey. Yes, we were up to about counting the previous evening. We were up to about twenty twenty one by that point. Yes. So. Speaking of, we go to Glen Scotia, aged 18 years next. So another Glen Scotia. Yeah, we did try a Glen Scotia at Gordon and McPhail as well. Oh yes, sorry, I'll just quickly go through the ones we tried. Um, we had a Glen Spey 2000, these are all connoisseurs' choice, it's all arranged a, a by Gordon and McPhail. Um, so we tried the Glen Spey 2004, uh, the Speyburn 1989, the Alta Bay 1996, the Highland Park 1989, um, uh, we had a Glen Scotia Connoisseur's Choice. I'm not sure if the Glen Talkers, um, the only one I could find online was 27 years old. I don't know if that would have been the one they gave us. It's very expensive, if so mind. Well, it was so it's a Glen cheap. Scotia. Yeah. So. I think they're willing to, I think they probably go reasonably. Yes, so if it. the ones I found online are the ones, you'll have to forgive me, the notes I took while we're drinking were quite limited because... We I were didn't drinking. Want to be, well, we were drinking. I didn't want to be constantly on my phone or in a notebook. Yeah. Being it would rude. seem a bit rude in the boardroom, probably. Yes. So um, I took very brief notes of the names and then tried to find them online. So, uh, yeah, you'll have to forgive me if, if those uh, years are wrong. But they're the ones I found online. Yeah. And all of them, again, were very nice. Uh, yeah. Great, great audience. Okay. Yes. So... The Glen Scotia, aged 18 years, uh, says here this 18-year-old single malt began its maturation in refill bourbon casks and refill American oak hogsheads, after which the finest casks were hand-selected by the malt master to be vatted together in the first fill all Rosso sherry casks for a finishing period of 12 months, a proper big brother to the double cask. So Ooh. it's probably going to be fairly similar, but maybe a little bit more... Uh, more sherry. You know, sherried. Well, yeah. well, if I'm right about the Oloroso versus Jimenez, then this should be deeper. Yeah. Uh, Definitely getting the caramel coming through. Interesting to note, it's obviously the second Glen Scotia back to back, but that's just the the the. Whilst it's famous for its whiskey, the Campbelltown is a town, so there's not a whole load of um, distilleries there. There used to be a lot more, but I think they're down to three or four now. So. Oh, it's very caramelly Def- on the definitely notes. Definitely getting the caramel coming through there, yeah. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I was just adding the Glen bit, Scotia double It's a little bit, sm- little bit smoky as well. Um, a little bit on the on the end, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say tell you in the nose, it says the higher peak content gives a more sweet and smoky character and a beautiful rounded finish. So onto the palate, we have a rich, deep vanilla fruit flavours, apricot and pineapple, plump sultana. So I'm going to guess that we're going to have some kind of uh, dried fruitness to it. Yeah, it's got that zinginess to it again. Um, yeah, light smoke right at the end. Mm-hmm. Definitely got that kind of sherry mouthfeel that we, we yeah, both it enjoy. It sort of blooms into that, though, like it. Mm. Seems to start narrowly and then fill the. Yeah, it's. It's also like quite it's, creamy again. A lot of whiskies, and this is with the benefit of hindsight, but a lot of whiskies that we've had, sometimes the flavours feel like it's one, then the next one hits, then the next one hits. Mm. This one seems to be, it develops between each one. Yeah. It's quite a natural progression. I would agree with that. 
it says here that the finish is long and dry with a gentle yeah. warming spice, and I can definitely agree with that. Mm. My tongue is still feeling quite dry. That's very nice again. Yeah, this is very, very nice. So yeah, I'd say it was slightly worse than double cask. Not bad. Yeah, I would say it was third. better. So oh, caramel, very light smoke at the end. We all know why you didn't think it was as good, because of the smoke. Oh, you can barely taste the smoke. I just really yeah. liked the stronger caramel in the double cask. I felt the caramel bit came through more. And I have a real... I don't want to say sweet, because it was like salted caramel. That's what it's like. Yeah. It's like salted caramel. Yeah. It's not sweet. I'm going to change. I'm going to amend the notes to salted caramel. It's, it's that kind of umami flavour, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Progresses from narrow to wide mouth feel. Yeah. Uh, lingering, warming finish. Yep. Uh, anything else you want to add to that? Uh, no, I think I'll agree with those. Don't have any. F- I would just say that um, it's quite creamy. Quite creamy. Okay. Yeah. I'll give that. I give that a four. You? I'd probably go to the four and a half. Four and a half. You know, we've only got one five. Yeah. Only one of us has ranked something a five once. What would that be? You can guess. Would it be uh, Kaz Ganam? No. Would it be the other... Mm-hmm. Why can I not think of the words? It's the Abuna. I yeah, ranked it a five. You gave it a five. What did I give it? Four and a half? Yeah. yeah. You said it was I'm a little t- bit too much. I'm still waiting for that, you know, perfection. This is, this is the problem we've got. When we go back to them now, not the. Yeah. I mean, I still think the Bruno is a fantastic whiskey, and I'm sure some of the ones that we reviewed earlier are still fantastic. Mm-hmm. But I bet if we go back to some of them that we gave like a three and a half, four, we'd be more like eh, maybe more of a three, maybe more of a yeah. two and a half. Possibly, but this is the. We're not. Uh, we're not. What's his name with his whiskey bible? Jim Murray. Yeah, Jim Murray. Shout out to Jim Murray. Shout out to Jim Murray. If you want to send me the book for free, or everything in it. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, second day up in Speyside, yeah. where did we go first? We went to uh, Rothes yes. to visit uh, Glenn Grant. As seen story. on TV. Well, yeah, we, uh, uh, interesting side, side tip bit. We were watching, um, uh, in the evening we were watching Salvage Hunters because we're classy. And, and uh, Yeah, and uh, the, on the very day that we'd been to Rothes to visit Glenn Grant, they went to a shop in Rothes which was basically a tat shop. Well, but we were stood outside of waiting for the bus. Yeah, and we were confused as to how a business like that survives. It turns out it survives because they do house clearances and then people come in and offer them exorbitant amounts of money for old furniture. Yeah. So, the, yeah. The, the, the person we Egg on our for, face. Yeah, person we were laughing at for having a bad business. Way better at business than us. Yeah. Who would have known? <laughs> it's not difficult. But yeah, we went to uh, Glen Grant where um, we had uh, booked a, a tri- uh, just a visit to their garden. I say just a visit to their garden. The garden is impressive. Yeah, it has the lovely. duck pond. It has the waterfall that they used to get the cool- that's the stream for the cooling water for the uh, distillery. Yeah, it's very pretty. And it has, yeah, there's a lot of uh, like wooden uh, walkways and such. And there's there's a little hidey hole where uh, Major Grant used to uh, go up the waterfall and uh, offer people a... Yeah, there was a couple of spirit safes, weren't there? Yeah, he, he had a safe built into... Uh, a little cubby hole and a safe built into the uh, uh, side of the waterfall, basically. Not mm. under the waterfall, but just off to the side, where he would offer people... He would take them up and they'd say, oh, it's very pretty, and he would say, yeah, would you like a whiskey? And they'd turn to go and he'd say... Wait a minute. Yeah. When it's safe. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it was very nice. I hurt my knee climbing up a hill that I probably shouldn't have been going up. So yeah, you did, but, you did run up that hill with yeah, too much gusto. The passion of a younger man. Yes. Uh, so I'll bear that in mind that I have 30 year old knees now and uh, that's not a good idea. No. Especially when it's been snowing. Yes. So well, it, was, uh, it was lovely though from the snow. Yeah, it made it very picturesque. Um, yeah. Again, and after, I'll try and pepper this with, with photos to show. And then uh, after we had our walk, 
and it you know it was cold, but it wasn't that cold. So when no, the sun came out, it was quite nice. Yeah, it was great. Um, um, but then we 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 sat in a sort of summer house hmm. conservatory area, um, and we had uh, two uh, tastings. Mm-hmm. Uh, we booked for two, so we had uh, I believe it was the Majors Reserve, and was it yep. the ten? Yes. Yeah. So uh, we tried both of them; they were both great, and. Uh, as is the story with us, at, at least the stories we offered to pay for to try the Glen Grant 18, but they mm-hmm. don't have the correct license for that. I don't understand how that works, but maybe that's how they get around the licensing with the whiskey. Is they sell you the trip around the garden and then you drink the whiskey as a gift, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Um, so they, but they were willing to facilitate our request and gave us a tasting of the Glen Grant 18 anyway which is so, supremely highly rated yes it was pretty yeah well it's what, the best scotch yeah, 2017 best scotch whiskey by, by the man Jim Murray yep. so I want ah. to say Bill Murray every time but <laughs> as much as I'm sure he likes whiskey I don't know if he's you know if it's yeah. his primary, primary occupation maybe not it's um, probably saying, oh, we would have been better in Ghostbusters or something like that. <laughs> so the thing that max out uh, Glenn Grant was kind of an interesting thing because it kind of shows the, the impact of the still because yeah. Glenn Grant has very tall stills. Yeah. So only the lightest bits of the um, of the distillate get through. Yes. So Glenn Grant's famous, or uh, was known for very light, very delicate uh, uh, whiskies. Which seems to get it quite a little bit maligned uh, online. Not the 18, but the Majors Reserve and the 10. Yeah. And I've, I've got some fair because, I mean, we enjoy, both enjoy heavy sherry whiskies. Yeah. Which are anything but light, you know, the, the creamy and oily and dark. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that's what you want with everything. Yeah, and, sometimes and think, yeah, you're having people fish. Get, yeah. Or you just fancy a, a lighter whiskey that doesn't have like a 20 minute finish on it. Yeah, it's a summer afternoon and you just think, oh, I could go with whiskey. But yeah. You don't want to be... It's not I've, like a sitting around the fire type of whiskey you want. No. It's a, and I just think it's a shame that, you know, sometimes... The, because that's how you lose all the different ones. Yeah. And they end up everyone just makes the same. Everyone's just yeah. going to start doing, like... Like a villain. Yeah, or well, it's either going to be peat monsters or sherry monsters and nothing in between. Yeah. And that's a shame. It would be. Although Glenn Grant is doing very well for itself. So. Oh, they definitely are. And an interesting thing, like, you know, how I would say that in our tasting box this month, they're yep. from Campbelltown and they've only got a couple of distilleries left. Roth has seemed to have, I think, three, maybe four distilleries and the town is a street. Yes. So let's say they had the... I may be doing it a disservice, but, you know, I'm... Yeah. It's, it's a small yeah. town. We basically walk from one end to the other yeah. in about 10 minutes. Yeah. So you've got Glen Grant's there, Spayburn. Uh, I believe, yeah, maybe Spayburn, um, let's be. There's yeah, one, one across the road from Glen Grant. I don't know if that's part of them. Maybe. Yeah. And then on the road in, you had Ben Riak, you had Longmorn. Yeah. Uh, Linkwood. Yeah, I think so as well. It was just—it's just madness. You can't—you can't look left or right without seeing a distillery. Yeah, there was like four or five on the road in, like yeah. a mile stretch. Yeah, just ridiculous. It was, yeah. So. Yes. Okay. Why don't you talk us? Is it you talk so us through this? Is it my turn to, to talk us through the Springbank? I'm just so generous. First of its name. First of its name. So this is the Springbank Cask Strength, age 12 years. This is the first cast strength today although they've all been quite high they've all been 46 percent so far and uh i said first of its name because this is the first spring bank actually branded yes. as spring bank yes whereas the hazel burn was done in spring bank but it was a different brand yeah um so this was apparently a limited edition that sold out in, uh, from so it was august 2018 it was released and it's already sold out yeah um it's matured 70 percent sherry casks 30 percent bourbon casks Springbanks are slightly peated and account for eighty percent of the distillery's output. So I guess Hazelburn is their non-peated variety. Yeah, must you be. Think you just call it peated or not. Everyone else seems to manage. 
Um, I'm sure there's some reason behind it. Yeah. Uh, so the nose, a fruity and nutty combination, cherries, apricot jam, pistachios, oh, I like pistachios, and toasted oats. Salted caramel and marzipan begin to emerge. We've got a lot of salted caramel recently. No, I'm complaining. There's salted a, lot great. Of, uh, a lot of sherry in these whiskies, I think. But, um, yeah, I could definitely smell like the toasted oats. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not little, getting a lot of little, little bit of this. A little bit of the marzipan as well. Right at the end. Mm. That kind of, not bitterness, but you know what I mean? Yeah, like mar- like, mar- like almondy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So apparently on the palate, um, sweet and delicious Scottish tablet. Is that like a cheap iPad? No, it's the, the best form of uh, cooking sugar into a sweet thing. Oh, right, okay. I'll get um, you some next time I come and see you. Yeah, you never get basically any. pure sugar. Sounds good so, to me. Yeah. Um, prunes and honey. The classic Campbell Town style develops sea salt. Oh, you love this. And a light smoke coat the mouth. You like your sea salt, don't you? Yeah. And the finish is long and warm in honeycomb, orange marmalade, and licorice, closely followed by demerara sugar, almonds, oats, and prunes. I don't think we can tell the different kind of sugars yet. But what between what we've got demerara and yeah, castor. Yeah. Okay, I, I do get a little bit of the nuttiness now. I I my, my nose is just just smell the inside of my elbow again. That was a trick we were taught, by the way, to to kind of reset your nose, like you cleanse your palate to cleanse your nose. You can uh, sniff coffee grounds, but we were told that that was a bit pretentious. And what you actually do is just sniff the inside of your elbow to kind of it's a neutral body smell, your own body smell. Mm. So, interestingly, with this, I was kind of worried because. Because Campbellton is actually Campbelltown, yeah. I said Campbellton, which is a surname, uh, is quite close to uh, Isla, yeah. really geographically. I was wondered that their peak would be kind of this sea saltiness, but I can taste it on this. But it's not like the cutting end that you get in a lot of. No, I'd say this is the that. heaviest peak we've had today. Yeah, and but it is, is a little bit salty, but it's not overpoweringly it's salty. It's not strong enough peat to stop me enjoying it. No, it's not strong which enough. Which probably shows that it's quite light because I have low tolerance for peat. Yeah. Both the the flavour and people call peat. Yeah. God damn. Interestingly, there's a person I work with who is both called Pete and Campbellton. But there you go. <laughs> is he the mayor? Yeah. I wish I worked in Campbellton. That would mean that I'd probably be working in whiskey. I wish I had worked in space side. Anywhere. Yeah, that would be better. But Anyone yeah. got a decent paying job up in space side? Yeah. I mean, man. If you're paying uh, £30,000 a year to clean toilets, yeah, you take it. Uh, yeah, happily. I'd be the happiest toilet cleaner ever. Yeah. I mean, I think any toilet cleaner getting 30 grand is probably <laughs> pretty happy. But yeah. Sanitation engineer, thank you very much. So it's nutty on the nose, but I'm not getting it through the, the, the taste. I can get... Uh, you're not going to be able to get it because you don't know what it is, but I can get the Scottish tablet. Okay, if you say you can get it, I'll add it to the notes. I'll trust you because, like I say, I like you say, I don't know what that is. Mm. You'll have to forgive my ignorance. Uh, it's like a drier it's... fudge. Drier is in taste or texture. Texture. Mm. Crumb I quite like fudge. So I had some really good fudge recently. It was like melted in the mouth, and it was like. Oh, this is the other thing with tablet. If you just stick it on your tongue as it gets. It's basically like dried out sugar that's been formed into a, a slab. Right. But it's obviously been cooked a little bit. It's usually a light brown colour, like like skin tone. But you're not allowed to say skin tone anymore because that implies that all people are white. Yeah, so, okay, like our skin tone though. Yeah. Okay. That was very nice as well. Mm-hmm. But I really like, like I said, salted caramel flavours. So. Like I said, the saltiness on that it's, it comes in quite early and it it stays, but it, it, I, what I don't like is when it, you drink the whiskey and you're like, oh, that was nice, and then it slaps you at the end with, a, oh, and here's just like some seawater. Yeah, or, or like the heavy peat ones where it's literally you can taste nothing else. Yeah. And it's just like, uh, what's the point? What would you give that then? I'd probably give that four. Four. I've gone for three and a half. Um, Seems fair. I was on yeah. the border of three and a half and four, so. I think I'd have given it higher if I'd have had it before the others. Yeah. But now I've had those other two, and it's like those Glen Scotias were really good. Yeah. 
So okay, but this is um, a really good, a really good uh, run so far. I mean, yeah. drum teams are all very good. Shout out to drum teams as always. Yeah, uh, uh, they're almost all very good. We'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we have to. I have an a, a apology to make. Yeah, you do. Um, so from Glenn Grant. Yeah. Um, we caught the train once again. Well, we got a bus back from Glenn. Okay, Grant. so a bus back to Elgin. Yeah. And then a train to uh, the infamous town yeah. of Keith. Yes. Big Home of Keith. your favourite distillery, Glen Keith. Yes. Well, but, I'd like. This is where I'd like to interject with my apology. Yes. Because. It turns out that Glen Keith is part of the um, Chivas Brothers uh, manufacturing process, basically, mm-hmm. and to the extent that there's no way that the the, the Glen Keith that we tried by Barry Bros and Rudd, who is our new enemy, who are my new enemy, can mm-hmm. be uh, characteristic. So I assume that they put it in the wrong wood, and that is why it tasted like Mr. Sheen. So, sorry, Glenn Keith, you are off of the. I don't want to swear. So the the list, and I've put, I've replaced you with Barry Bros and Rudd. The pool list. Yes, that yeah. that is the word. Yes, that is the word you were looking for. Yes. So uh, we didn't visit Glen Keith, but uh, where we did go was Strathila. Well, uh, they are fairly connected, to be fair. Yes, uh, they're literally like yards apart, and they're connected. Yeah. In terms of Glen Keith is a modern distillery built in the 70s. Um, so it's all computerized and all that nonsense. Uh, and Straff Isla is one of the oldest, um, opening in 1786, I believe. Yeah. So uh, because of that, uh, to cope with modern production, uh, Glen Keith helps out, basically. So it pipes over um, steam or hot water yeah. um, and for, the... for the production in yeah. Straff Isla. And Strathfyla sends its new make over to Glen Keith to be casked. Yes. Um, so Strathfyla doesn't often release single malts. It's as as is Glen Keith. It's it's owned by the the Shivers Brothers, which is part of Pernod Ricard now. Yeah. Um, but all Shivers Brothers blends are based around Strathfyla malts. They make up something like forty percent, I think Dow said. Something in that region. They act yeah. as the base malt. They basically start there. Yes, and then use the other distilleries to to tweak make the characters correct. Yeah. Um, so Strathfyla is, as well as being one of the oldest, it's held up as one of the prettiest, and and definitely would agree with that. It's it's got twin um, uh, pagodas. Yeah, twin pagodas from yep. above where they use they don't they no longer uh, peat their own or dry their own. No, uh, malt their own barley's even, but uh, they. They used to, um, and the roof of the building still stands. They use it for uh, offices and uh, the boardroom and such just now. Yes. So. so, again, uh, well, well, actually, this one was different because we booked a tour. Yeah. We so, actually, although we've done a tour before with Abalawa, we yep. decided we'd do a tour. Of Who when are we also things. owned by uh, Chivas. But... Abalawa, are they? They're Pernod Ricard, but I don't know if they're Chivas. I'm pretty sure they're managed by Chivas. All right, okay. Um, so, yes. Uh, we booked a tour after we heard that it was one of the prettiest we thought we'd see it. Um, yes. And it is, it is very pretty. And we had a very good tour guide uh, in, in Dow yep. who introduced us to all of it and then took us for a tasting in their boardroom afterwards. Yep. Um, oh, so the first tasting we had was in the warehouse. Yeah. Where we had uh, one of the rare Strathfyla single malts, the Strathfyla 12. Yep. And then we're taken to boardroom where we're treated to three extra tastings, where we had uh, the Shivers Regal 12, the Shivers Regal Extra, and the Shivers Regal 18. Yes. Um, as we'd arrived early, uh, we had also sat down in the bar and had a couple of cells. So we'd had, I'd had the Shivers Mizunara, which is yeah. aged in Japanese Mizunara oak. It was designed for the Japanese market, uh, initially exclusive re- release there, and it is the latest blog. Yes, uh, on the drum team blog. Oh, the drum team blog on the Whiskey blog. If I don't know. Yeah, paid. yeah, that'd be nice. You'll have to forgive me. I'm I'm far in. Um, yeah. and you had the Shivers Regal Altis. I did. It was also very nice. Yes. Um, and then at the end, once again, we managed to wrangle or 
not wrangle that sounds like we forced it but um we were talking to Dow afterwards because we had a while to go for a train or whatever yes and um we were basically she said we were talking about our tasting that we'd had the night before in uh yeah uh, mcphail shop and we mentioned that uh we mentioned the uh, Alta Bain, and she says, oh, have you tried this one, basically? And we said, no. And she says, give me a minute. And then yes. she came back with uh, with one each. Yes, which was, again, very friendly. I, I feel like we must stress um, all of the distillers that we visited, the, ca- the staff were fantastic. Yes. Very welcoming, very friendly. It's it's always the, the place you go to taste or to the tours or... Any of those things, they're always set up very plush, very nice. Yeah. You, got, you know, your usual kind of fireplaces, plush chairs. You're encouraged to take your time. Um, yeah. It's, it's lovely. It's a lovely experience. And the only time uh, that we were ever really scheduled, like like had to do things on a time, was on the tour. And that's obviously because it's, it wasn't just us on the tour. It was... Yes. There was other people. But you're still so, encouraged to ask questions and, you yeah. know, take your time. And, and there's places, obviously, you can't take photos, which is fair enough. But yeah. they still make sure that they tell you, you know, you can take a photo here if you want. And, and Dow took a photo for those of a, the other group. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's all very friendly. It's very nice. It's definitely a, a holiday I'd recommend. Yeah. Um, it's not cheap. Even if you're not massively into your whiskey. But good. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, if you're into shortbread, as we said... Or yeah. Scottish tablet, I'm sure you can get some. Or oh, macaroni pies. Yeah, which apparently aren't a thing in England. No, i would never heard of it. There you go. So yeah. just like when you have doing like hash browns instead of tax cons on your breakfast. Monsters. I'd rather have neither, to be honest. But You don't like potatoes. Except, so. Potatoes an abomination. Um, yes, so there on you go. Saint pa- you said that on St. Patrick's Day. Is it St. Patrick's Day? Yes. Well, they should agree with me. <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. Without trading on, you know, too sensitive of a political issue while I'm slightly drunk. Yeah. I get what you mean. Yeah. I am disappointed in recently, though. What, they? They lost to Wales, didn't they? Well, I mean, that wasn't the only thing that caused their... No, that was the only thing. There's nothing else remarkable happened in the Six Nations. Okay. Nothing else remarkable. The the fact that Scotland did one of the greatest turnarounds in rugby history at Twickenham, um, yeah, was was nothing to do with it. Definitely didn't influence and anything. The fact that England snatched what some would call a lucky draw right at the last minute. Yeah, I've not seen the match, but it must. You guys must have been amazing in the second half because it was like our lead at the, at the uh, half time was like the greatest it's ever been at half time against Scotland. Yeah. Uh, so. that's, prob- that's probably what the what the uh, crux of the managerial or coach speech at yeah. halftime was. That's like, was, that's like you are an thousand- embarrassment to this country. <laughs> yeah, it's like a thousand years of hatred got distilled into forty minutes. Yeah, yeah. Fair play though. It's good to see Scotland do well in Six Nations. It's about time they did. Yes. Too many um, of us decide to take up drinking. That's the yeah. problem. I can say that as a quart Scot. I can say that I'm I'm proud of them. So yes, that was that was Strathila and also a little bit of Six Nations. Yeah. Um, so because we're slightly over our fifteen minute goal, uh, we'll press on. Yes, next whiskey, Maestro. Right. Yeah. So we're on to the uh, the long row. Mm-hmm. This again comes from Springbank, but it's not labelled as Springbank. Uh, so also a summer 2018 release. Long row is the heavily peated and twice distilled sibling of the Springbank. Making it up to the final, making up the final ten percent of their output. So Hazelburn is ten percent unpeated. Yeah. Springbank is eighty percent peated, and Long Row is ten percent heavily peated. Yeah. Right. So when we say eighty percent, it's eighty percent of the range. So. Yeah, I think it's of their output in it, so it'll be in liters yeah. or yeah. gallons yeah. or whatever That's your what I mean. unit yeah. of measurement is. Yeah. Fluid ounces. Um, you put on like a bit of an Alice Schwarzenegger accent. Yeah, I, I didn't want to go fully American, so I went for. <laughs> you went Austrian. I went for the only other still ever uh, Hollywood person I know who isn't American. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, this sherry cask beast has a remarkable sulfurous character, 
Guaranteed to get a strong reaction. A Marmite Dram. Let's see. What's it say on the nose? Very fruity, toffee apples, pears and strawberry chocolates. In the background, salted popcorn kernels, mint leaves and honey. Mint. Sheesh. I get, I get fruit. I do get fruit, but I still wish I could pick out the individual. Just give it a name. Oh. I can get toffee apple. That, that okay. Oh, inhaled too hard there. I'm going to have to sniff my elbow. That starts quite nice. It starts with the salted caramel, the popcorn caramel toffee flavours. But then it really hits that sulphur in the middle and then builds into a like peat, oh, but not taste- heavy peat. Yeah, not heavy peat, but it's it like it seems to like the sulfur character seems to cancel out all those initial flavors, and then all that you get after that is the peat because although it's not a heavy peat, all the other flavors have been cancelled out. Still not bad, though I don't think it's like, not bad, but I quite like it. But yeah, so the palette on the card says salty and coastal. The fruitiness continues with raisins, chocolate orange, and prunes. A dryness develops. I don't know if you can really call chocolate orange fruit, otherwise getting your five a day would be much more fun. Um, a dryness develops with debonair sugar and digestive biscuit. And then the finish is drying barbecue spices, cayenne pepper and paprika, followed by cinnamon sugar, oats, pecan nuts and the typical gentle long row smokiness. And I would agree it's very gentle. It's not like... But it's all you taste because that sulfuriness in the middle seems to annihilate the rest. Mm. It does feel a bit like I'm sort of about to breathe like green fire or something. I don't know what colour sulphur burns. Green, I think, yeah. Blue? Green? Right. Yeah. I wasn't I didn't do very well in many sciences. So you became an engineer? Yeah. Because you well, skipped the... No, so I became a civil servant. Yeah, true. Hmm. Sorry, I uh, uh, just typed up the notes. What have you written? Uh, caramel popcorn to begin, fruit on the nose. Probably should have put that first, but whatever. Yeah. I've, then I've put my personal take, which is sulfur in the middle cancels out a lot of flavours, leaving the peat to dominate at the end. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add to that? I'd just like to say it's not unpleasant. Yeah. <laughs> it's very sulfury. It is. I'm going to have to actually put water in the glass after that one. I didn't bring, bring through my fancy pipette, so. No, no, I don't mean into my whiskey. I just mean I need to mm. clear my glass. Probably a good idea. It is very sulfury. What would you give that? I'd probably go like a three. A three? Yeah. I'm going to give it a, a two. And that's... that's Again, I feel like two and a half is the average. So a two doesn't reflect the fact that I think it's a, a shit whiskey. No. It's just that it is quite... Peter it's just that sulfur thing. just yeah. ruins it for me. That ruins the surf. It starts off good. It's definitely a good whiskey. You know, I'd, I'd give like a Jack Daniels like a 0.5. Yeah. But it's just... It's, yeah. Compared to the other ones that we've had where we're giving them a 4, they're definitely twice as good. Yeah. Okay. That's I'm my... Not, I'm not, I'm not criticising your opinion. That... No, I'm just trying to, you know... Yeah. So my audience isn't lynching me. Yeah. So well, a current think... audience of uh, three people, one of which yeah. definitely wouldn't lynch you. I feel like they struggle to lynch me between them anyway. <laughs> oh, shots fired. Mm. I'm going to make Rob listen to this. Well, who listens to it? Yeah. Does your uh, mum? No. I haven't told her about it. But, uh, I should do. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, my mum listens to it. Uh... Who else? Got a, you said uh, our American friend does. Yes, she so definitely she has, couldn't. She definitely couldn't lynch me. She's got no body strength. Just be like an orbital strike, though, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please don't get astronauts to come over and beat me up. <laughs> Those guys are like physically super fit. I can't take on astronauts. And I, even if I did, can you imagine the press I'd get? <laughs> yeah, local especially dickhead beats up astronauts, ruins space program. Especially considering like. I suppose astronaut. Are you still an astronaut if you only go to the space station? Yeah, you're still in space. Yeah. Okay. In that case, they might be young. 
I was going to say otherwise if you if it has to be someone who's landed on the moon. <laughs> I could take Buzz Aldrin. I don't even know that you could. I'm not even going to lie. No, I don't think I could. To be honest, he, he beat up like a, a moon landing hoaxer. Like, yeah, he did. And when he was like, yeah. yeah, he was like 78. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on Buzz Aldrin's side. Yeah. Uh, okay, so the last kind of dis- official visit on our distillery tour, yeah. shall we say? Yeah, it was uh, uh, a bit of a walk. Um, yes. To uh, uh, what used to, uh, uh, a non-operational uh, yes distillery. Um, it's now owned by the what Scottish government is it? Yeah, the Scottish. Like, it's our version of the National yeah. Trust, isn't it? Basically, yeah, pretty much. Um, so it was uh, the um, it's at the Dallas Do Distillery, um, which yeah. was a little bit of a walk from uh, Forest. Um, yeah, it, a mile and a half, two miles. Yeah, it probably wouldn't have been as bad for me if I hadn't run up that hill and done my knee in. And we walked through a storm. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it was quite quite windy and quite rainy. But you know, at the end, we got uh, basically unrestricted. Uh, access with a you know a guided tour, but you know it's on a like a tape recorder type wand. Yeah. Um, and you you just uh, select the number when you get to the place, and it'll play you a little bit to explain what's going on. Yeah. Um, they had so we got to go into the malting floor. Um, all yeah, through, which we'd like, never seen before. Yeah, uh, into the like still rooms, into the yeah, the mash room, tone, into the washbacks, all of that. Into the smoking, the peeling yeah. room, yep. yeah, uh, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, it was, and we uh, even into the old uh, excise house where they would barrel up the cask up the whiskey, and the excise man would be making sure that they hadn't stolen any. Yep, you know, because you have to pay tax on every drop. Yeah, depending on percent, obviously you pay for the alcohol, don't you? So percentage of alcohol yeah. has to be measured, and then how much. So if you're putting it into the cask, then it doesn't get uh, excise on it until it comes out. Yeah. But if someone was to take some new make, they would have to pay for that, which would be what you know at sixty percent or whatever. Yeah. And um, but yeah, that was really interesting. And then we got to watch a, a very very excellent video. Well where... animated. Yeah, with a guy uh, dressed as a character from a, I think a Walter Scott mm-hmm. uh, epic poem. Uh, the Lady of the, the, Lady Lady of the Lake. Like it was mm-hmm. uh, Roderick Dew, and uh, he had a he's got a whiskey uh, named after him, mm. basically to uh, to be sold at Dallas Dew, I think. It's Produced the, by Longmont, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's a blend. Uh, yeah, it was nice enough. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, it, it was not spectacular, but it was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, I believe just, it's only sold at the distillery. Yeah, I enjoyed the uh, just being able to have a nose about, have a look myself. Yeah, very much so. Getting close to the stills and everything that you normally can't get near. Yeah, see um, some of the definitely worth a visit. Anything else? I would agree. Uh, if you're not, I would say if you. If you wanted to go, you could probably just risk driving because uh, the whiskey wasn't spectacular. So if you if one person drives, I'm sure they won't feel like they've missed out too. too yeah, heavily. I'd say one of the other problems as well with with that one was it wasn't particularly uh, disabled person friendly. I know there are a lot of stairs, but which is not it's not that it's um, not their fault. That's how no. that's how. That's how like, distilleries are. There's lots of it's been closed down. since the 80s, so yeah, they, you, you they weren't ramps. exactly, yeah. they weren't exactly disabled friendly anywhere. In the well, 80s. you wouldn't be able to build ramps up, up or put elevators in or no. lifts. Sorry, it's yeah. it's yeah, it's too tight. It's old buildings. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I guess we go on to our sixth drum. Yep, is that me? Is it? That is you. You get this to be the uh, special drum. The special person this time. Always Finish special. with a flourish and all that. Yep. So this is another Springbank uh, right. called Springbank, aged 18 years. So Springbank's annual 18-year-old sellout release crowns our Campbelltown lineup. Eponymous Springbank whiskies are distilled a befuddling two and a half times, 
reflecting that some of the initial distillate is run through a second spirit still akin to the hazel burn. So on the nose, you should get lemon meringue pie, pear skin, not the pear, just pear skin, olive oil, almonds, and digestive bi- biscuits. Sorry. A typical Kintyre yeah. coastal brininess comes to the fore. I want to go out there and say, do people go around smelling pear skins? Do Is people a... go around and smell different areas of the coast for the brininess? Yeah. Being like, oh, this is Kintyre brininess. This isn't any of that other brininess. How do you store these things in your head? Like, oh, I remember this smell. Yeah. It's pear skin. <laughs> Not the pear flesh. From that time I peeled a pear and then peeled, made sure that I scoop all of the flesh off. Yeah, so that's usually... Dry it out so that the juice isn't on it either and then smell the skin. No wonder whiskey reviewers are busy all the time. They've got to literally smell every <laughs> substance to, known to man. Yeah, oh, it smells like the uh, the dust from inside the the number forty five bus seats <laughs> on the uh, in nineteen forty six. Yeah, a peculiar smell, but not one I dislike. Yeah, I get pear, definitely get pear, but I don't yes, get pear like skin. A, I'd call it a winter fruits. Yeah, you know, smell. you could be forgiven for calling it an apple. Yeah. Probably it's more peary. Don't get lemon meringue from that. Or almonds. Bit of salt. I get the sea salt right at the end. Right at the end. Mm. So, palette. In the background, dried bananas, coconut shavings, and butterscotch. Like the first two just taste like bananas and coconut. What the more dried, dried bananas. bananas and coconut shavings. Coconut shavings is literally just coconut. I bet it's thinner. <laughs> That's fat proof, literally, that is. <laughs> the more prominent carrot cake, treacle, and freshly squeezed limes engulf the palate. Okay. And the finish is very the delicate. Cake. You don't like carrot cake? No, it's no, I don't the worst mind cake. It. I said I don't uh, mind the carrot cake. The worst it's, cake. It's still cake. It's, yeah, I mean, it's still good because it's cake, but the finish is very delicate. Licorice, gingerbread, and Madagascar vanilla. I've never had Madagascar vanilla. I fancy they think we are. Come on, dram team. Well, it is the sixth dram. They've got to give it some pomp. Yeah, closely followed by mint, Trinity cream. I no idea what that is, and vanilla milkshake. All I know is Trinity is the bad guys from Tomb Raider. Shout out! Uh, to is it Trinity cream like? Is it like booze? Yeah, I don't know. Let me do my shout out to Alicia Vikander anyway, without interrupting. Oh, shout out to Alicia Vikander. You were great in the latest Tomb Raider film. Okay. She's married to Michael Fassbender, you know. Oh, is she? The, uh, the the very white, very not similar to anyone else, uh, star of Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I don't think that's the one film he'd want to be remembered for, but yeah. <laughs> that's why you picked that one out. Yeah. Apparently, uh, He's an Oscar winner as well. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, apparently. Yeah. I think so. I'm pretty sure when I looked her up, you know, to see if she was married or worth carting. Because um, you have the ability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously. Oh, I'm, I'm a famous... Blogger, don't you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she won an. Let's see. I'm sure she. You got to fill. Yeah, she received an Academy Award. Yeah. Okay. For in the Danish girl, that one with. Um, All right. Yeah, yeah, another one. What's his name? Eddie Redmayne playing the uh, transgender yeah, yeah. person. I know the one. I always wanted to see that. It looked interesting. It's what was well. It's kind of just. Don't want to like you know trivialize anyone's plights of that, but it's Oscar bait, isn't it? It is Oscar bait, but yeah, at the same time, it looked interesting. Yeah, there's lots of interesting Oscar bait films, aren't there? Yeah, like Schindler's List. I've not seen that either. It's good. In that Liam Neeson. Yeah. So you're a racist then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, because as we know, commit one racist act once. <laughs> yeah. Forever. Well, I mean, he was also Schindler, so. Yeah. <laughs> Member of Nazi party. <laughs> yeah, fair. Because people who are people in films. How are did also people not notice this before? How, why were they surprised? <laughs> yeah. Sure, he saved some Jewish people, but he was also a member of the Nazi party. And that's but, yeah. bad. The funny, the funny. Did, did I send you that message when I was at work in uh, Reading, and uh, I got in the lift? No, it was Schindler's lifts. <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah. Uh, 
using that, the tragedy. That company just needs to change their name. This is fantastic. Right, right, uh, back to the whiskey. What do you so, get from this? Well, Trinity Cream is apparently boozy creme brulee, so... Um, I get... It's very well balanced. It's got good poise on it. A little bit of nuttiness to the end. It's oily again. Yeah. I get the kind of... I guess by dried bananas, maybe they mean like a subdued banana flavour. Like, it's not sweet, but it's there. I don't know. Like, dried bananas are... It's actually quite... It's, they're generally sweeter, aren't they? Because you've yeah. taken... Hmm. I would just say that... It's, I get the banana, but it's it's not... Yeah, it's kind of like banana in with the vanilla-iness and the butterscotch. They're all yeah. very pudding flavours, if you know what I mean. And by pudding, I mean the American type of pudding. like Yeah, the... the Slop. Yeah. Like, all like Angel Delight. Don't knock Angel Delight, though. No, but, you know, yeah, those yeah. sorts of flavours. It, it is slop, though. Yeah. A tasty slop. Yeah. I don't really get carrot cake from it. I certainly don't get limes. No. Or mint. No. Could probably agree with uh, vanilla milkshakes and uh, yeah. Trinity cream or creme brulee or whatever. That's... Yeah, delicate finish, light caramel yeah. slash creme brulee. So I've got banana vanilla slash butterscotch combined. Yeah. Pear on the nose, well balanced slash poised. Delicate finish, light creme, light uh, caramel slash creme brulee. Yes. Anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, that's probably encompasses all of it. What would you give it? I'm gonna it give was... that a three. It was all right, but it wasn't as good as the Glen Scotia's. I'm a bit higher. I'm in the three and a half, four range. Yeah, three and a half. Yeah, probably three and a half. Uh, I feel okay. like if I'm swiveling as much yeah. as I am to give it a four, it's probably a three and a half. Yeah, three and a half. I'll give it that. Okay, so just before we finish, do you want to just quickly talk through? Oh, I'll quickly talk through the last place we went to. Uh, sure. I'd, I would also like to say we did buy a batch of whiskies to have with our uh, uh, podcast, which never came. Well, which we did, but didn't come to light. Yes. Uh, but they were nothing to write home about. They were. So they were blends created for the different historic sites in Scotland, weren't they? Five different historic yeah, sites. So there was one for Edinburgh Castle, one for Stirling Castle. Uh, I can't even remember that. There was one places. for a Pictish village. Yeah. Stuff like um, that. Yeah. Um, they were fine. Solid. They were drinkable. Two and a half, all of them. Yeah, pretty much just across the board. Yeah. You know, like, if someone was to say, what is what is whiskey, and you described it, yeah. that's what they'd be. Yeah. <laughs> Unremarkable, but yeah. not bad. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. so the uh, last one. Uh, so on the drive back from Elgin to Edinburgh Airport, uh, for me to come back down to Bristol and be sad, uh, we, we went to the. For lunch. Yeah, we stopped off for lunch at Glenlivet. In the snow. In the snow, yes. Um, but the good thing about being up in Speyside is all the roads are pretty cl- are cleared pretty quickly to allow all the deliveries through for the distilleries. It kind of is what the region relies on. Yes. Um, so yeah, they uh, they just opened for the season that day. Yeah, it was the first day, which was quite lucky. Yes, um, and it was again. It's you know it was a very lovely um, both the visitor centre and the and the staff very welcoming. Yep. Um, very had perfect. a I had a nice uh, panini. I think you had soup. Yeah. Yeah. I like soup. And they had a great display of all the bottles up on like a spiral thing. I got a photo which I'll put in the podcast as a back. Uh, background. Yeah, obviously um, no no whiskey on this day because I was we were driving back to. Uh... No, so we didn't do any tastings or anything like that. So this must be a, a passing note. But it was again, you know, very pretty to look at. Um, yeah. It's very friendly. Uh, definitely worth a visit, I'd say. It's, it's what I find interesting is that for an industry where these places are chucking out. I say chucking out. It sounds like what, but you know they're producing a high volume of whiskey mm. like daily running 24 hours nothing seems too industrialized anywhere you know it all seems i suppose it's all quite self-contained isn't it yeah but like yeah everywhere's run with like four or five engineers or 
technicians or whatever. Yeah, it's because it's all so heavily automated now. You only need yeah. a few people. But but like normally when you get that heavy automation, it it makes it more and makes yeah. it feel less. Makes it impersonal. I guess I guess the ones with the visitor centres try to cover that up. Probably that might be the case. They try to focus on you know. Uh, the things that people want to see when they go to a distillery. So the old fashioned, the old buildings, you know. I just mean, this. I just find it amazing that they managed to maintain that while still kicking out like thousands, millions, millions of liters in a week, probably. Yeah, it's yeah, it is very impressive. It's definitely worth seeing. Yeah. Definitely worth a visit. Okay, so that was the third, hopefully successful, uh, podcast. Yeah. Um, I will be uploading this, let's see. So if you upload it uh, this Friday with your blog. Which will be coming, yes. On, um, on Friday the... Doing the uh, wood finish from Ben Roman. Yeah, so that'll be Friday the 22nd, or somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, that will be two weeks since the visit. Yeah, and so... we will be probably following it fairly closely with March's Dram Team Box. Yes. That's due for delivery any time now. We would have obviously done this drum team box earlier, but we went away. Yes. The, the hope was to, to do a nice Speyside special. Uh, it didn't quite work out. So we've chucked it in with the Campbelltown special. Yeah. As we all know, you like longer podcasts. Yeah. Long form. That's, that's the We've not been trying to shut them down at all. That's the true form of the, the art. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think that wraps it up. So yep. thank you very much for listening. Um, as usual, please tell us if you've, you know, any whiskies you'd like us to try, any, any suggestions, uh, any distilleries you think we've missed or that you visited and you'd like to tell us about, leave yeah. it in the comments. Yeah. Thank you very much. See, See you, you later. Bye.